Good afternoon, everyone. SIUK Nigeria is live with Bucks New University. Over to you, Ryan. Hi there, thank you very much. Okay, so yes, my name is Ryan Berry. I am an international officer for Bucks New University. And I'm also a graduate of the university as well. I studied a degree at Bucks. So everything I talk about is also coming from a place of real experience as well. So just a quick word about the university itself. Although the name is Buckinghamshire New University, we very much aren't a new university. We've been around since 1891. And we recently celebrated our 125th year. The new in our name actually stands for our course content. We are constantly updating what we teach to our students to make sure it reflects what is happening in the industry today. So that when you graduate, you are already ahead of the curve and you have the competitive edge because you are studying exactly what is needed for that industry when you graduate. And we are a small university with excess of 5,000 students. And lastly, we are located in the beautiful county of Buckinghamshire with great access into London. Just for a reference, you can see the map here, the little pin is where we are. And you can see we are right next to London. We're actually right in the middle of London and Oxford. And these pictures here are just of the surrounding area. It's a really, really lovely place to be. Our main campus is situated in High Wycombe. Uh, which is a relatively small town but we also have another campus that is in London as well so we have a lot a lot of connections with the local area. In terms of the types of courses that we offer I'll say a little bit more about this later but the type of university that we are our approach to teaching is very practical in everything that it tries to do we make sure that when you are in lessons you aren't just looking at a board and taking down notes it is very much about you <clears throat> excuse me it's very much about you learning practically so you don't just graduate with a degree you very much graduate with physical creations things that you can show to prospective employers the areas that we have uh, so all of our courses are broken down into schools and throughout these courses are Throughout these schools, sorry, are over 150 degree programs and we have foundation programs and postgraduate programs as well. But what we have within our art design and performance school, we have graphic design, uh, video game design, we have acting and dance and film studies. We have aviation and security. So at our university, you can learn to become a pilot, not just graduate with a degree, you also graduate with a piloting license. A big part of that course is flying. We have business law and computing, and that covers artificial intelligence, business management, accounting and finance, law. We have healthcare and social work and human and social sciences. So that includes uh, psychology courses. It includes sport therapy, sport exercise and science. We have media and creative industries. So again, that covers film and it also covers audio courses so you can learn everything you need to to step into the world of film or music we have a songwriting course as well and we also have nursing and allied health and all of these courses are so so practical it isn't just the name of the degree that you graduate with you graduate with all of the knowledge that you need to really thrive in your dream career so in the heart of everything we do, we strive to offer a first class student experience. Now, some of the ways that we've done this, we have invested 100 million pounds into our campuses to make sure all of the facilities that you use are up to date. They are very much specialist simulation suites. So you can see in some of these images, we have virtual reality suites that our psychology students use and our gaming students use. We have a five story library that is open 24 hours a day and is accessible for any student, whether day or night, it does not matter. If you've got some work that you want to do and you want to be in a learning environment, the library is always open for you. We have a flight simulator, we have fashion studios, film studios, all of these don't just help you learn more, they help to mentally prepare you for the environment that you are going to step into after you graduate. So you are already comfortable with whatever it is you're stepping into. Our students union is top three in the UK. For anyone who doesn't know about a students union, I am gonna talk about that a little bit more later on. 
I said earlier about us having uh, access to 5,000 students. That is relatively small compared to other universities. And this means that we do have smaller class sizes, which means all of your lecturers will get to know you as an individual really quickly. They will start to recognize your strengths and how you can enhance those. They will also recognize any weaknesses or gaps in your knowledge that you might have and work with you to fill those in. And we also offer the unique big deal package, which means everything extracurricular is offered for free or a very, very small cost to you. Just some key achievements that we are very proud of at the university. We are a top 30 UK university as voted for by our students. So the National Student Survey, it is only students that are allowed to vote in this and our students responded so positively to what we do. We are within the top 30 in the UK. We're a top five university for academic services. This doesn't just mean the level of teaching, this means our careers department as well, who can help you with writing the perfect CV. They can host mock interviews for you to make sure that you are ready for any job interviews that come your way. We are a top 10 university for employment rate, and that's particularly great, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on as well. Uh, as a specific example, our fashion courses are voted number one in London and the Southeast, and that comes down to the facilities available and the materials that you're allowed to use as a student. And we are also, uh, according to highest average salary, we are 37th in the UK for salaries. So it isn't just about preparing you for the world of work, it's making sure that you go into a well-paying job as well. So preparing you for the world of work. All of our courses are career focused and they blend professional, practical and academic teaching. Now, what that means is the professional aspect. You are treated not like a student, but like a colleague of all of our academics. They talk to you like somebody who they've been working with for years. They show you that level of respect. The practical element, I've talked a lot about that already. But again, in these pictures, you can see one of our music studios as well. So you know about everything it is that you need to be using once you step into your desired career. And the academic teaching, so there is still teaching at, in everything that we do. It is making sure that you don't just know how to use the equipment, but why that equipment is what is being used, why it is recognized within the industry, how it has developed over time. It gives you a all-rounded, incredible array of knowledge within your industry, and sometimes even further than that as well. Um, Beyond this, we have employability embedded into all of our courses, making sure that you are employable, that employers want to have you working with them. And again, we do that through our teaching, making sure that you are aware of all aspects of your chosen industry. Then when you step into that role, the only training you will really need is to understand the specific workings of that company. But in terms of the industry and the work that you'll be doing, you're already prepared for it. You've already been doing it for three years if it's a degree, for one or two years if it's a master's. All of this feeds into the fact that 98% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months. So all 98%, it's a huge number. If you study with us, the chances of you achieving your dream career are so, so high, or even just stepping into further education. If still there is more that you want to learn, we prepare you to take that next educational step. Again, we rank 37th for highest graduate salaries in the UK. And we also offer industry relevant opportunities. So as a university, the majority of our courses don't offer a placement year, but what they do offer you is a lot of part-time opportunities. Now that might be in the form of part-time work or a short placement that's based around your studies. It may be in the form of an internship. It may even be a client brief where a company will visit the university and assign our students work for them for that company to use in the real world. And these are all things that can go on your CV as well. They are professional achievements. We also have special skills for work training, boosting your CV, um, building skills that employers will value. So we don't just give you the knowledge from your course, we teach you any additional skills that you may need. If you feel you lack confidence, but the role you're stepping into requires public speaking, they'll make sure public speaking is something that you are so natural at that no one would ever know it was an area of weakness of yours. So some examples of employers that our students work with and also employers that visit the university, whether that is to deliver a workshop or a seminar or a guest lecture. Uh, now one that everyone might know on here is Microsoft. Now, obviously they are a computing company. So naturally it would be our computing students 
that they would come to speak to. But even if you aren't studying computing, you can still attend these talks. All of these companies, because they are so big and have so many different departments, any student is welcome to attend these talks. So although Microsoft as a business focus on computing and technology, they still have a marketing department. So if you're studying marketing, you can speak to the representative from Microsoft about working within their marketing team. And they are always so willing to hear from our students because they know that the standard you are taught at means they have so much confidence in you as a person before you even start the job. Now onto the January intake specifically, January and February. In light of the current global situation with COVID-19, the university has made the decision to condense a lot of its courses uh, from one year into six months. So all of our foundation courses, if this is what you're interested in, instead of studying a whole year of foundation and then moving on to a degree, you will only study your foundation program for six months. So you would start in January, you would finish in July and you would enroll onto year one in September, all within the same year. And that goes for some of our degree programs as well. So if you are interested in computing, computing and web development, cybersecurity, software engineering, business management, accounting and finance, business and finance, marketing or law, if you're interested in studying any of those as a degree, if you enroll in January, you will finish your first year in only six months and you will enroll onto your second year in September. Entry requirements are exactly the same. And again, I'm gonna talk about those later on as well. But this gives any student the chance who wanted to start in September but wasn't able to, you can start in January and still graduate at the same time overall. It's a really great opportunity for anybody who is interested in this. And we also have postgraduate programs starting in February as well. And this includes cybersecurity, sport, sport performance, human resource management, applied forensic psychology, uh, migration studies, and our newly formed IMBA as well. So all of these are available for February. In terms of entry requirements, so overall, uh, if you're looking at IELTS for English qualifications, across all of our courses, we ask for six overall with no element lower than 5.5 for our undergraduate courses. If you are looking to join based on your high school certificates specifically, we require successful completion of your examination certificate with five subject passes at C6 or above. Now, because of the style of teaching at the university and how practical it is, those aren't specific areas in which you need to achieve C6. You, it's very open because we appreciate a lot of our courses and a lot of the content that we cover isn't something necessarily available before you come to join us. So with that, as long as we can see your academic prowess, you can join the course. We appreciate if you're looking at piloting, you may never have set foot in a plane before. All of our courses are designed to both enhance someone's skills who already has the experience, but also for those who have never experienced this before in their life. And if you do achieve uh, English specifically with C6 or above, you don't need to provide IELTS or any other English qualification. For our postgraduate courses, a lot of them still only need six overall in IELTS. Some of them may require a little bit more. Um, even then, it is only 6.5 or 7 that they need for postgraduate. Typically, you would also then need a degree to go on to our postgraduate, but some of them you can even join based on your professional experience as well. They are all designed to give you a lot of different routes to go into the postgraduate programs it doesn't rest solely on your degree and sometimes as well it doesn't need to be a relevant degree again they just want to see your academic or professional experience just to know that you are prepared for the course our requirements are in place only to make sure that you are ready so if you are looking at applying just some general top tips for a successful application highlight your strengths a lot of people struggle when it comes to talking about themselves i know it's something that i struggle with but when it comes to an application you need to make sure that you make yourself shine you need to make sure that it's coming across why you are applying for this university what makes you the right candidate for that course how are you already prepared for it and when i talk about preparation i don't necessarily mean experience sometimes passion and commitment determination are the only things that you need so make sure you convey that in your application if you are applying directly to the university, we have our own direct application system that is also completely free of charge. But if you're applying to us specifically, talk about us, talk about Buckinghamshire New University in your application. Mention what is good about our location. Mention what you like about the course content for the course you are applying for. How is that going to help you on your chosen career path? All of these things 
show our admissions team and it shows our lecturers that you are aware of the decision you are making, you have put some thought into it and you've come to the decision, yes, Bucks is the right place for me and let me tell you why that is. You also need to demonstrate who you are. Again, talking about yourself, this is your chance to show off. Talk about what you have done so far. Talk about what you have done even though you've had obstacles to overcome. Talk about what you've done if it is a natural talent. Make sure that when you talk about yourself, you highlight all of the positives, whether that is in your life or your personality, your experiences, whatever it might be, do not be afraid to talk about yourself. It is what they want to see. And that can carry just as much weight as your academic qualifications or your professional experience. We want to know who you are as a person. So above all, be confident. You don't just have to write your personal statement and then submit it. You can sit on it if you like to. Write your personal application, walk away, maybe get some friends' eyes on it or your family's eyes on your application so that they can give you some feedback in case there's anything that you might be missing. It's very easy to get too close to it and not see the full picture. So make sure that you do take the time. It's not necessarily something that needs to be rushed. And all we want to see really is who you are. I cannot, cannot stress that enough to you. Now, uh, this is an option that we've made available mostly for EU students, but also anybody who was looking to come over for January or February and you were worried about perhaps quarantining, if that should be the case, we have our own hotel as part of the university. It is found just outside of the High Wycombe town where our main campus is. It's a beautiful location. It is a 12th century abbey and it is a fully fledged hotel. So if you are looking to quarantine, or even if you want to arrive early just to get to know the area, we have alternative accommodation available and we can provide three meals delivered to your door. Everything is included, a flat screen TV, Wi-Fi, hairdryer, radio, iron, whatever you might need, it is all there ready for you. And the grounds it is on is absolutely beautiful as well. And it's a good chance perhaps for you to arrive early and just to get to know the local area before you either move into uh, full-time accommodation or if you're looking to rent privately this is a great way for you to arrive and just consider more of your options if this might be useful to you in terms of our own accommodation if this is something you've been considering i lived in the university accommodation and i also worked for the accommodation team as well but in terms of what we have firstly we have lowered all of our prices in light of covid19 for anyone that may have been financially affected. So we've reduced all of the prices between 10 and 30%. Practically, as an example, we have a halls that was £114 per week last year. This year, it is only £80 per week. There is no deposit and should the situation get bad again, we don't think that it will, but just in case, we can release you from the contract if need be. Everything is also included within the price, all of your bills, Wi-Fi, and we also provide insurance for your belongings as well. Automatically, you'll also get a third off of the gym and you'll also get free membership to the Bucks Cafe Club. So if, like me, you need your morning coffee to be able to effectively start the day, you can get it at a nice reduced price. Uh, all of our bedding, cleaning and welcome, welcome packs are available on request as well. So we can provide you with bedding, uh, cleaning materials, food even, if that's something that you need. You just need to ask and it will be provided to you. Now, all of our accommodation, it isn't on the campus, but with the three different sites that we have are only a, the furthest one away is a 10 minute walk from the main campus. That's the one that I lived in as a student. Uh, you can see some of examples of the spaces in the pictures. The top image is one of our studio flats where it is entirely your own space. So within this image, there is a double bed. You can see the desk and the bookcase and the balcony behind the camera. It's also a kitchen area and your own ensuite bathroom as well. And we do have shared accommodation available. So typically you may be sharing with five other people, but some of our options is a shared bathroom and shared kitchen. Some options you have your own bathroom, but a shared kitchen. It's a great social experience living in our halls of accommodation. I always recommend if you're new to the area, new to being a student, live with other students. It's a great, great experience as well. Just in case, if you know anybody else that's looking to come to the university at the same time as you, or if you know someone that's already here, you can request to live with them as well. We are more than happy to let friends stay together, but you will always have your own room, your own personal space available to you. Uh, we can also offer quieter accommodation and we can also offer same sex accommodation as well. There's a lot, a lot of options available to you. And all of this is designed to make sure that 
whilst you are studying with us, it isn't just a place that you go to to get a degree. It's very much your home, whether that's for the next one year, two years, three years, whatever it might be. We're doing what we can to make this your home. Again, as I was a student, I now work here. I really believe in everything Bucks has to offer. I believe in its approach to everything. It's an incredible environment to be a part of. It really is. So now just some information about our Students' Union. So if you don't know, Students' Union or SU is an organization within the university that is designed to focus on all of the extracurricular activity and the local community as well. So their approach, we have free societies. So a society is basically just a club. So you can get together with like-minded people, whatever your interests or hobbies might be. Some examples, we have a pizza society, where they get together every week and just eat pizza, which I think is the most incredible thing in the world. There are also game societies, there are nationality societies, there is anything that you can imagine. And beyond that, if you have a hobby or an interest that you want other people to be involved in, you can set up your own society. As long as you find 10 other people that share your passion for it and are interested in it, get them to sign their names on a piece of paper and you will be able to form your own society. And you'll also be given some funding towards it as well. And it is all designed to be completely for free as well. Now, with these as well, I always recommend joining a society because it is another thing to put on your CV. It shows employers that you haven't just studied a degree for three years, but you've taken on additional uh, interest, additional ways to spend your time. And that's the other thing. It shows about time management skills as well. And within the society, societies, you can become the chair of the society. So you can show employers you're capable of leading a group. You can become the treasurer to show that you are responsible for finances. There are so many things you can do and you can even as a society host events at the university you can take over university spaces for your society and invite the rest of the university along to join you it's an incredible experience for those of you who are interested in sport we offer free sports whether that is football rugby american football hockey tennis golf climbing swimming whatever it might be we have it at the university and again it is free to join and you can either do uh, you can even do it competitively or you can just play it for fun. It is completely, completely down to you how you would like to do it. And again, free events at the university. And we can also offer free additional skills as well. And um, we also can employ you as a student to work at the university as well. Now, it isn't just about letting you experience more social aspects and diversifying your interests. They also focus a lot on the local community and the wider community as well through various volunteering events, charity events and fundraising. There is an advice center in case there's anybody ever, in case there's ever anyone that you want to talk to and it is completely confidential. We also have a student newspaper and radio station where you can work again, just to enhance your own skills or gain further experience. We also have a student job shop, again, a chance for you to pick up additional skills or if there is something you feel you would like to improve on or just get a bit more practice in it's available to you and we also have freshers helpers and buddies who are students that we employ at the beginning of each uh, start of year and they are just there just to give new students directions uh, give them advice on great places to visit locally just generally to be on hand to help for any new students that require it and again this is paid job as well. So this is, these are all things that can go in your CV and look incredible to employers. So that is a lot of information about the university. Um, but if there is anything that you'd like to know, um, now would be the time. I'm just gonna check to see what information, what questions may have come up in the chat box. Um, Hi, so, Ryan. Hello. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, this is Bimbo. Hi. Hi, okay. So thank you for the session. That was very informative. Um, we learned a lot about Box New University. So we have a couple of questions that came from the students. Yep. Um, some on YouTube and some here. Sure. Okay, so I'll start with a question and answer session now. And yeah, the first question is coming from Obi Bakari. Mm -hmm. is interested in knowing the deadline, the visa deadline for students coming from Nigeria. Sure. So uh, if you are looking at January, 
the deadline to apply is actually, well, the deadline for us issuing a CAD to get your visa is the 18th of December. So there isn't long left. So you want to make sure really you're submitting your application within the next week, I would say, in order for it to be reviewed in time, if you're looking at January. All right, thank you, Ryan. All right, um, from the same person, is interested in knowing if there are any specialized MBA for one year duration, especially for experienced candidates? Yeah, absolutely. We do have one year IMBA options. Um, so as it is one year, there's no placement necessary. It is purely designed just to enhance one's own knowledge um, for their own kind of career progression. Um, but if you just search IMBA on the university website, you will see um, we have a lot of different options available for IMBA. We either have a one year full time, uh, a two year program. We also have part time options as well that are distance learning. There's lots of opportunities for IMBA. All right, perfect. So from Dola Akinde, um, student wants to know if you'll be granted a post-study work visa based on student visa, or mm -hmm. would he or she need to reapply separately? No, you would, um, yeah, you would grant, you would be granted the post-study visa. As long as you study a full-time course that's longer than one year duration and complete that course, you'll be eligible for the post-study visa. Okay, yeah. So a student wants to know if it's um, combined with a study visa or it has to be a separate application, different from it the is, student visa. Yeah, sure. It is a separate thing. Your study visa covers you for the duration of your course. Um, so if you are, um, whatever course you're applying for, the visa will cover you for the duration of that course. Um, but towards the end of that, you will be given all the information you need to go for the post-study work visa. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so um, Dola also wants to know if there are job opportunities. I think you mentioned some of them. Job yes. opportunities yes. during the studies. I don't know if you want to stress on that. Yeah, sure. So as a university, we are a placement plus university, which means there are opportunities that come up. They won't be year long placement opportunities. Um, they will very much be designed around your level of study. But as all of our academics are from the field they now teach in, some of them even still now work, still work in the field as well. So they constantly receive work opportunities for their students. And again, because they get to know their students so well, they really quickly know who would be right for which job. So there is no shortage of opportunities. And there's also lots of scope just for an ordinary part-time job as well. There is no shortage of employer, um, uh, employment opportunities at the university. Okay, thank you. And someone wants to know <laughs> which is the best university in the UK? I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I think I would have to say Buckinghamshire New University is the best university in the UK. Okay. All right. And then the person that wants to know what the, how much is the minimum max the student should score in the 12th standard to get a scholarship, I guess, in, in Box New? Yeah. So actually with our uh, scholarships, we have recently designed what's called the Vice Chancellor's International Student Scholarship. This is a 1500 pound scholarship towards the first year of your tuition fee. And all you need to be awarded that scholarship is to meet your meet the course's entry requirements. So like I said earlier, if you achieve six in your IELTS, for example, you will receive the 1500 pound scholarship and it is automatically awarded to you. There is no application needed. As long as you're an international student, overseas wow. fee of 12,500 pounds, you will receive the scholarship. Oh, that's very generous. <laughs> All right. So someone else wants to know if um, if this can work, if studying can work without the IELTS results or certificates. Sorry, could you repeat that question? Okay, the student wants to know if IELTS results or certificates is necessary to get in, into Box New. Is in, um, is um, vital, like it's compulsory to get into yeah. Box New. Sure, sure. So with um, so no IELTS isn't the only English qualification we accept. If you are uh, finishing high school in Nigeria, we can accept your English results um, from your high school certificates. We also have a long list of further English qualifications that we do accept. Um, I'm just typing into the 
chat box. If you search general entry requirements on our website, you'll see a full list of every English qualification that we accept. And you can also search your own country on the university website, and there you will see your country's specific entry requirements. And Nigeria is one of the countries where we don't need an additional English qualification. We can accept your school qualification. Okay, thank you very much. So Pamela wants to know, um, she has IELTS 7.0, which we're aspiring March 2021. Mm -hmm. And she wants to apply for September intake 2021. And she does not want to rewrite the IELTS again. I guess what she said um, has covered, a WIAC might be able to it will suffice, right? Yeah, I mean, if you got seven overall in your IELTS, firstly, that's a really good achievement. Um, but I would be surprised if you... Having achieved seven nights, I'd be surprised if you didn't achieve similar in your high school qualification, possibly, which you could consider instead because that won't expire. Um, but as you're looking at September, either way, I can appreciate not wanting to retake any exams, but you will absolutely have the time to, should that be necessary. Okay, thank you, Rian. Olayemi Okunlaja wants to know the minimum deposits for Nigerians. Yeah, so it's actually the same for all of our students. Um, the minimum deposit we ask for at the moment is £5,000. Okay, thank you. And um, from Bad Day Doctor, can a married person come with his family? Okay, so with bringing a spouse with you, um, they would need firstly their own visa. Um, and you would also have to demonstrate extra funds being available to show that you can afford um, for both of you to, uh, for both of you, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, for both of you to be able to afford living in the UK, you would have to demonstrate additional funds and they would need their own visa. Um, and you also would have to find your own accommodation. You wouldn't be able to live in university accommodation with someone else, for example. All right, great. And um, Roland wants to know if the work can be used for either undergraduate or postgraduate students. Sorry, could you repeat that again? Yes, the work the English requirements um, alternative, can it be used for postgraduate or yes. just undergraduate applications? Yeah, absolutely. If we accept it for undergraduate, we accept it for postgraduate. Um, it's worth saying uh, on every single course page on the website, at the bottom of the page, you will see the specific entry requirements for that. Um, a lot of our postgraduate programs only require the same level of English, um, but some of them do require a little bit higher English. So take a look at the specific course page that you're interested in. And towards the bottom of the page, you'll see what are the entry requirements and everything will be listed in there. All right, thank you very much, Rian. Okay, so I, I, I can see we have a couple of questions from students saying they are not able to hear anything from this end. So oh, no, you can so hear sorry. me. Can, <laughs> probably, um, we'll just type on the group chat. Probably they are not calling over the internet so that they can hear us. Um, Deepika, can you kindly of send an email, send a message generally to them so that they could hear? Thank you. Yes, so no, we, are, we are having the YouTube recording. So the students can uh, listen from them and can contact, contact Ryan after this. Okay, okay. Could you kindly send a link for the YouTube recording so they can follow us there? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I've also shared my email address in the chat box as well. So okay. if anyone's got any questions, by all means, get in touch. All right, perfect. We have a couple more of questions to go. Yeah. Yes, so um, Adiola would like to know if the university offers MSc clinical research full-time or part-time for September 2021. Not for clinical research, I'm afraid. Um, you can, again, on, the, on our website, what you can do is if you search postgraduate on our website, um, you'll see in there all of the postgraduate courses that we've got. Um, it'll be worth considering specifically what career you might want to go into, just in case we do have the right thing, but we don't have that specifically. Great. Okay, so um, I think a few people still have questions on what courses are offered. I'll just pull the courses together, which is um, Sustainable Building Designs, um, MSc Clinical Practice Management and Education, MSc Advanced Clinical Practice. 
Yeah, so we do have some of those. The key thing to double check would be if they are a full time course. Um, either full, if they're full time, we can provide a visa for the course. If they are part time, um, we can't provide a visa, but they may be available as distance learning instead. So in which case, you wouldn't come to the UK to study, but you can still get the master's degree. Okay, thank you, Rian. All right, Tony wants to know the tuition for business management, masters or pre masters, if available. Yeah. Um, well, so the majority of our courses um, for the international fee, 99% uh, of them are £12,500. Um, some of them are £13,000. And the only one that's higher than those is our two-year IMBA program, which is £16,000. But that's only for the first year. Um, so usually, again, towards the bottom of every single course page, you will see the tuition fee there. Um, but if it is a full-time program, You'll be looking at twelve thousand five hundred to thirteen thousand pounds per year. Okay, so um, since there are a lot of people asking for for um, some courses available, are you able to ever send a link so they could also go through it? Yeah, absolutely. Link for the course page. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So if I I'll share the general link for the general university website. Um, on the website, if you just search for the name of the course that you're interested in, and then our courses that are relevant to that will then appear for you. <clears throat> okay, so um, the next question before the final question, Juliet wants to know if your university has a master's in social work. If yes, what's the tuition and the least deposit? Yes, uh, so again, uh, yes, we do have MSc in social work. Um, we are our healthcare and social work school is incredible. Um, there's no shortage of opportunities for you. So within that, um, they would look for relevant qualifications and professional experience. Um, so if you've got experience, like I said, with um, submitting a su successful application, make sure you talk about your experience and how you intend to use this qualification to either achieve or further your career goals and dreams. Uh, in terms of the course cost, again, I believe it's £13,000 for the MSc Social Works. Okay. All right. So um, I guess we have a couple more questions on YouTube and mm -hmm. also on Zoom. So on YouTube, um, a student wants to know who the top UK-based employers for Box New Graduates are. Who are the top employers for Box New Graduates? Who are top employers? That's a really good question. We have such a, because all of our courses are so vast in terms of the areas that we cover, um, I would say the areas we do particularly well in would be our nursing and aviation schools um, because they are quite niche in terms of their content. So we have excellent links with airlines and airports for our aviation students. And in the UK, we work with a huge number of NHS hospital trusts as well for our nursing students and our, um, all our other healthcare students as well. So they regularly recruit every single one of our students. Um, but aside from that as well, all of our lecturers have the most incredible network links as well. So once the lecturer gets to understand your skill set and your interests and passions, they will then recommend to you a company for you to go and work for because don't forget they are experts in their fields and the connections they have are okay great thank you Brian. so um the other student also wants to find out the deadline for accommodation application that's one and mm -hmm. then is it too late to start um, applying for january intake Okay, um, so no, it is not too late to start applying for January. Um, you do still have some time available, but our deadline for issuing you with a CAS to get your visa is the 18th of December. So really you want to make sure you are submitting an application, ideally this week with all of the documents that you've got um, to ensure there is time for admissions to receive the application and get the response to you. Um, and the other question was accommodation. So accommodation, there isn't necessarily a strict deadline. Once you have a conditional or unconditional offer from the university that you accept, accommodation will be in touch to let you know of the options that are available to you. Um, but they, they, there will always be space for you. So do not worry about accommodation. Okay, thank you very much, Rian. 
All right, so Buddy wants to know if there's a specific amount of living expenses and must it be in the accounts before visa is granted? Yes, that is an excellent question. So according to the UK government, the amount you are required to demonstrate to us as evidence of finances is the cost of the first year of your course. So like I said, the £12,500, as well as £9,135 for your living costs for the full year. So really, you want to be able to demonstrate approximately £22,500 to be able to study with us on average. Um, but having said that, if you are looking at taking out any kind of financial loan, perhaps anything else like that, that's a case of letting our admissions team know when you submit the application so that they can issue an offer to you for you to go and secure your finances. But generally speaking, you want to be able to evidence £22,500 in your bank account or your guardian's bank account. Okay, thank you, Rianne. And um, a final question is, um, the, a student said you have set 6.5 in IELTS qualifies you for scholarship. Um, is that a discount in tuition or full? Uh, okay, so still wants to know the value of that scholarship. Yeah, so the scholarship that we have, like I said, is the Vice Chancellor's International Student Scholarship. So that will award you £1,500. Um, all you need to do is meet the requirements of the course to receive that scholarship, and that's against your tuition fees. Okay. Hello. Hi, Rian. Hello. Okay, okay. All right, and thank you very much. I think we've come to the end of the Q&A session. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. And then also for our students that joined us, thank you for joining us. If you're yet to, you should have the contacts of Rian on, on the display, displayed right now. And you can always contact him. You can also contact us. And um, if you're yet to send in your applications, please, you can contact us on the center and also contact Rian for information and you can send your document to us so that we can get started, especially for those that are still looking at January 2021. Yep. And also yep. for January, September, um, Rian, sorry, September 2021 is open, right? For it, it is open, it is open, yeah. Oh. But at the moment, the priority is, of course, the January intake because it's so soon, but you can apply for September and admissions will get back to you. Perfect. So if you get to apply for September 2021, also, please um, feel free to send in your documents um, to us. You can also contact Rian if you have more questions. Yep. So at this point, I think I'd like to hand over back to Rian, um, just in case you have a final word for our participants for today. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, thank you for all of your questions. They were really good questions. And of course, thank you to all of you guys at SIUK as well for facilitating and helping with this. It's always... It's a genuine pleasure doing things like this. So thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you everybody. Now we've come to the end of the session. We await your applications and follow up questions. Just contact Rian and um, SIUK like we had said. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you all. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye now.